Hi kiddos, we're reading Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. This version is adapted by Debbie Guthrie and illustrated by Jason Alexander. Um, if you would like to, you can pause on the pictures so that you can view them for a little bit longer than what I show them for, and then press play when you're ready to resume the story. <clears throat> we're on chapter 11, Who Stole the Tarts? The King and Queen of Hearts were seated on their thrones when the Griffin and Alice arrived. There was a large crowd around them, all sorts of little birds and beasts, as well as the whole pack of cards. The knave was standing before them in chains and with a soldier on each side to guard him. Next to the king was the white rabbit. He had a trumpet in one hand and a scroll in the other. In the middle of the court was a table with a large dish of tarts upon it. They looked so good, it it made Alice hungry when she looked at them. I wish they'd get the trial done, she thought, and hand out the refreshments. But there didn't seem to be a chance this would happen, so she started looking around to pass the time. Alice had never been in a court of justice before, but she had read all about them in the books and seemed to know the names of nearly everything there. That's the judge, she thought, looking at the king. He did not look comfortable at all. And that's the jury box. And those 12 creatures, some of them were animals and some were birds, are the jurors. The 12 jurors were all writing with pencils on little slates. What are they doing? Alice whispered to the griffin. There can't be anything to write down yet. The trial has not begun. They're putting down their names, the, gris the griffin whispered, it, whispered in reply, so they won't forget them before the end of the trial. Silly things, Alice began in a loud voice, but she stopped when the white rabbit cried out, silence in the court. The king put on his glasses and looked around to see who was talking. Alice saw all the jurors who were writing down silly things on their slates. She also saw that one of them did not know how to spell silly. She had to at, he had to ask his neighbor for help. Those slates will be filled with nonsense before the trial is over, thought Alice. Harold, read the charges, said the king. The white rabbit blew three blasts on the trumpet and then unrolled the scroll and read, The Queen of Hearts, she had made some tarts on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole the tarts and took them quite away. Consider your verdict, the king said to the jury. Not yet, not yet, the rabbit interrupted. There's a great deal to come before that. Call the witnesses, said the king. The white rabbit blew three blasts on the trumpet and called out, first witness. The first witness was the hatter. He came in with a teacup in one hand and a piece of bread and butter in the other. I beg your pardon, Majesty, the Hatter began, for bringing these in, but I hadn't finished my tea when I was sent for. You ought to have finished, said the king. When did you begin? The Hatter looked at the March Hare, who had followed him into the court, arm in arm with the Dormouse. Fourteenth of March, I think it was, he said. Fifteenth, said the March Hare. Sixteenth, added the Dormouse. Write that down, the king said to the jury. They wrote down all three dates on their slates and then added them up. Take off your hat, the king told the hatter. It isn't mine, said the hatter. Stolen, the king exclaimed. The jury made a note. I keep them to sell, the hatter added. I have none of my own. I'm a hatter. Here the queen stared very hard at the hatter. He turned purple. <laughs> Not purple. 
He turned pale. <laughs> Give your evidence, said the king, and don't be nervous or I'll have you executed on the spot. This did not make the witness feel comfortable. At all. He kept shifting from one foot to the other, looking uneasily at the queen. He was so nervous he bit a large piece out of his teacup instead of the bread and butter. At this moment, Alice felt very strange. She was beginning to grow larger again. She thought at first that she should get up and leave the court, but she decided to stay as long as there was room for her. I wish you wouldn't squeeze so close to me, said the Dormouse who was sitting next to her. I can hardly breathe. I can't help it, said Alice. I'm growing. You have no right to grow here, said the Dormouse. Don't talk nonsense, said Alice. You know you're growing too. Yes, but I grow at a reasonable pace, said the Dormouse. All this time the Queen had been staring hard at the Hatter. Isn't this the singer from the last concert who murdered the time? She asked an officer. The Hatter trembled so much that he shook both his shoes off. Give your evidence, the king repeated angrily, or I'll have you executed whether you're nervous or not. I'm a poor man, your majesty, the Hatter began in a trembling voice, and I had just begun my tea about a week or so ago, and that with the bread and butter getting so thin and the twinkling of the tea. The twinkling of the what? said the king. It began with the tea, the Hatter replied. Of course, twinkling begins with the tea, said the king sharply. Do you take me for a dunce? Go on. I'm a poor man, said the Hatter. Then the miserable Hatter dropped his teacup and bread and butter and went down on one knee. I'm a poor man, your majesty, he began again. Yes, you're a very poor speaker, said the king. One of the guinea pigs cheered and was immediately suppressed by the officers of the court. Suppressed is a hard word, so I'll just explain to you what they did. They had a large bag which tied at the top with strings. They slipped the guinea pig headfirst into the bag and then sat on it. I'm glad I've, I'm glad I've seen that done, thought Alice. I never understood what it meant until now. If that's all you know about it, you may stand down, continued the king. I can't go no lower, said the Hatter. I'm on the floor as it is. Then you may sit down, the king replied. Here the other guinea pig cheered and was suppressed. There, that finishes the guinea pigs, thought Alice. Now we will get more done. I'd rather finish my tea, said the hatter, looking nervously at the queen. You may go, said the king, and the hatter quickly left the court without even putting, his shoe, putting on his shoes. And just take off his head and just take his head off outside the queen said to one of the officers but the hatter was out of sight before the officer could get to the door call the next witness said the king the next witness was the duchess's cook she carried the pepper box in her hand alice guessed who it was even before she got to the court by the way, the people near the door began sneezing all at once. Give your evidence, said the king. Shan't, said the cook. The king looked nervously at the white rabbit who said in a low voice, your majesty must question the witness. Well, if I must, I must. The king said, folding his arms and frowning at the cook until his eyes were completely crossed. He said in a deep voice, What are tarts made of? Pepper, said the cook. Truckle, said the sleepy voice behind her. Call her that dormouse, the queen shrieked out. 
Behead that Dormouse, turn that Dormouse out of court, suppress him, pinch him off with his whiskers. For a few minutes, the whole court was in confusion. They chased the Dormouse out, and by the time they had settled down again, the cook had disappeared. Oh, never mind, said the king with great relief. Call the next witness. They turned to the queen and said, Really, my dear, you must question the next witness. It makes my forehead ache. Alice watched the white rabbit as he fumbled over the list. He was very curious, she was very curious to see what the next witness would be like. They haven't got much evidence yet, she told herself. Imagine her surprise when the white rabbit read out at the top of his shrill little voice the name Alice. That's the end of chapter 11 and the next chapter is the last chapter of the book. So go to the comments on Google Classroom and write down what you think is going to happen in chapter 12, Alice's Evidence. Dun, dun, dun.